Welcome back to Ferocious Education, this is Ed. Today, we're going to be talking about BitDigital, going with the ticker BTBT. And hopefully, I'm going to be able to give you a good amount of due diligence following that technical analysis and what I think about this one. So without further ado, let's jump right into this one. So BitDigital or BTBT, what we're seeing here is some information that we have relating towards their mining operations first, and then we're going to go towards the latest available presentation and the updates that we see from there. There's a lot of differences from the mining operations that are listed on their website versus the presentation, and I'll try to make sense of those as we go forward. So first off here, BitDigital represents one of the largest currently owned and operating fleet of any US listed Bitcoin miner, with an aggressive growth plan focused on increasing capacity month on month basis. Mining overview or institutional quality Bitcoin mining operations are diversified across the US and Canada. By strategically partnering with specialist hosting providers, we remain nimble to respond to evolving conditions access attractively priced and carbon-free power, and avoid significant infrastructure investments. We're able to make efficient use of our capital within the digital assets ecosystem in this way. In relations towards their Bitcoin mining, their dedicated Bitcoin mining in or house one of the largest currently owned and operated Bitcoin mining fleets in the world, and you're able to see that their hash rate is around 1,920 PHs per second, very close to 2 EHs per second. In terms of number of miners, currently they have around 32,500 miners. Now in terms of Bitcoin mines, there are around 3,086 Bitcoins. So it appears here on this map that they do have uh, around four main locations, one in Georgia, one in Texas, one in Nebraska, and one in Alberta. And we do have some news as well relating towards some of the milestones. So uh, starting off with February 2020, founding of Bit Digital and commencement of Bitcoin mining operations, April 2020, they launched around 6,004 micro BT M21S miners with a total hash rate of around 310 PHs per second, and they launched an additional 16,865 miners or mining units, including 800 units of uh, T3 miners, 256 of Bitmin, 2200 of micro BT M10 miners, and the list goes on. Around September 2020, they launched an additional 100 M21S miners in the US. And around October, they commenced mining operations in partnerships with Compute North and Link Global Technologies. In December 2020, they expanded to North America or expanded their North American Bitcoin hosting partnership with Compute North and Link Global Technologies, allowing them to deploy greater mining power to North America. February 2021, they expanded their North American Bitcoin hosting partnerships as well with Compute North and Link Global. It seems to be almost the same thing from December 2020. Not sure if this is a mistake. Around April 2021, we launched an additional 4,871 mining units, including Bitman S17s, S17 Plus, and Bitman S19 Pros, and their total hash rate reached around 2,574 PHs per second. And they also signed a 40 megawatt agreement with hosting partnership Compute North and their sustainable demand response program to deploy additional 13,000 AAS or ASIC miners at the Compute North facilities in the US. Around May 2021, they joined Foundry USA Pool with around 5,679 machines, adding up to 280 PHs of computing power to the pool. On July 2021, they purchased around 3,515 miners on Chinese spot market, including around 1,259 S17 Pros and a bunch of others as well, with a total hash rate now of around 1,920 PHs per second. So number of Bitcoin received, as you get to see, uh, quarter per quarter. In quarter one, 2021, you're seeing around 1,013, quarter two, around 562. Now there has been a drop there. And let me try to understand why with you all. So first off, it's this presentation they have. And this one uh, was posted, I believe, early on around July. So this supposedly this presentation is from July. So on this one here, they did have a hash rate of around 2,574 PHs per second. And if we're able to take a look into uh, what their current hash rate assuming on their website, it's around 1,920. 
So apparently they did have additional uh, hash rates given that assuming it also as well that the Bitcoin hash rate on their website is more accurate and updated than an outdated presentation. The number of miners here is around 45,736. Meanwhile, around over here is around 32,500. Number of Bitcoin mined on their website is around 3,086. Right over here is around 1,934. Now, they did say on their presentation that they did have global mining operations, including some in China. So it really take a look, took a look on Canada and US, including uh, Texas, Nebraska, and Georgia, and Canada, it's in Alberta. But in China, it showed that you did, or they did have Yunnan provinces miners and Sichuan. So if you're able to take a look into the history, my assumption here is that their Chinese operations were shut down by the Chinese government in the recent legislations with the China Bitcoin uh, mining bans. So in terms of sustainability, they're trying to reach 100% sustainable power or renewable power. And what I do actually anticipate that is happening is that they did have to reduce their mining operations because of the Chinese ban. Because at no given time, they did have around 32,000 miners uh, at a single time, as you get to see in this chart. So I think that assumption is fair and their hash rate currently is a little bit lower at 1920 but i do assume that these chinese bitcoin uh, or chinese bitcoin miners itself can be transferred to the us it's as simple as just configuring in the outage the voltage and that's all but anyway um, I assume that we might get to know a bit more relating towards that than adding a bit more uh, miners into the pool itself. Some of the latest news, and before moving on forward, if you'd like to see more contents like this, make sure to click the subscribe button on the bottom right corner and leave notifications on. And don't forget to drop a like to this video, and you can join our Discord in the description below, totally free. Now, back to the latest news, so I'm just going to read some titles here. Bit Digital featured in Bloomberg in-depth video report, and that's amazing in terms of more uh, exposure to the public. And then Fireside Chat between Bit Digital and Marathon Digital Holdings. That was an interesting one on the 27th. And Bit Digital and TG Host announces an expansion of strategic collaboration to further increase the combined hash rate by 2 eh So that's around 2,000 pHs per second. And Bit Digital incorporates corporation announces new US office in Miami Beach and you're also seeing some news relating towards the Chinese Bitcoin market that was way back in around July 22nd China's Bitcoin mining disruption offers bit digital growth opportunity so in that sense it does seem that they're talking about making use of that Bitcoin disruption but at the same time they didn't really give an update relating towards their Chinese operations uh, relating towards Bitcoin mining so my assumption is that they were shut down and they had to reallocate some of it in the US but the bit hash rate seems to be a little bit lower so I'm assuming it's not fully integrated yet or they weren't able to recover that many towards the US the other thing here is around 20 million ordinary shares were issued and they say that they're not going to be selling these securities but they may receive proceeds of up to 47 million dollars from the sale of these securities um, through another selling shareholder so in that sense the current shares floating is around 37 million so that's around one third additional probably into the flow if they choose to sell and i assume that they probably would somewhere down the line in terms of the short volumes these are currently sitting very close to around 48 to 59 58 so keep that in mind short volume though is not short interest but it tells you that the short activity is quite high the short selling activity is almost half all transactions happening during the day so let's move on towards technical analysis now, on a one month, one day perspective on the technical analysis part, we're starting to see that the 10 SMA is above the 30 May and the price point is above all moving averages. So that makes it really bullish, but it might sound like a lot of gibberish for a lot of you. So basically, these moving averages are based on historical uh, price action to show you that there is a lot of momentum and volume going forward. In terms of the 80x, this is sitting very close to 49. And what that really means is that it is at a critical point where you can easily see reversals back. And above 50, that's where you start seeing reversal. Today is uh, a drawback where it reached above 20 and then pulled back. So that might be a bit of a reversal. You need to take a look into the next supports uh, very carefully. 
In terms of the willing percent R, it shows that it was overbought. It's retracting a little bit towards neutral. And the MACD in this level is sitting kind of around the same level. So it is signaling in perhaps a potential for reversal. Momentum is still very positive around 1174. In terms of the stochastic fast and stochastic slow, both are pinpointing downwards, telling you to be careful where the next support is. And the moving averages aren't indicating much. But they're all pinpointing upwards, showing that this is actually a very strong bullish move. And you get to see volumes have cooled down a little, but they're still way more significant than they were, for instance, a month ago. That's usually a bullish indication that there is currently a strong hype for this stock. And the current Fibonacci retracements, and the reason why I use this one is because high frequency traders use it, they highlight some significant supports and resistances. The first significant support on the Fibonacci chart is 1471, below there 1039, below there 340. Resistances are at 1820, 2169, 2666, and $33. In terms of a price line action, you're starting to see that there is a very strong support sitting down at the 1595 level. Below there, another critical one at the 1485, going down to 1389, going down to around 1265, and then down to around 1231, and then down to around 1135, and then down to around 1087, going down to around 996, and then down to around 905. Next one is around 757, and then down around 637 and 508. Significant resistances are sitting at 1681, above there, 1758, above there, 1901, going upwards to around 2031, and then going a little bit higher to around 2074, 2193, and then going up to 2390, 2524, and around 2806. Comes to the question to Ed, what do you think about this one? Well, I do think that there is some insane amount of hype going on right now that pushed the stock price almost from $5 or even $4 to $3.97 all the way to $20. But I do think from what I'm seeing on the price action is that there is a strong retraction coming in down because a lot of people that were stuck around here are starting to sell here because they're barely breaking even. And they're thinking for the longest time around here, the person that bought around 1844, they saw it go down to $4 and felt really dread and bad and once they saw it around 20 they were like yes my time to sell and they sold and that's the massive resistance you're uh, really going with so that critical level around 1966 all the way down to around 1374 that's the massive resistance you're going to see with all these people in here now the problem is is that it's almost like a tumbling snowball for everyone else that bought around here that is watching the price action and they're thinking hey i'm on so much of a profit uh maybe i should sell that's a big portion of them those are traders or even swing trading some investors might think that way now in terms of what i think about this one in terms of the news and the chinese de investments i'm not exactly sure what's going on in there i would really hope a clarification from their side but what it appears to be from my side is that they have divested from it because of the Chinese issues and they're trying to promote themselves as US Canadian Bitcoin mining operations. Now in all that sense they have around 3,000 Bitcoins that they've mined so far. They're averaging around 500 per quarter so if I was to take 500 per quarter uh, taking a look into around four quarters around let's say 2,000 Bitcoins a year and 2,000 Bitcoins a year you're taking a look at 35,000 per Bitcoin you're almost averaging out around 70 million dollars per year on the Bitcoin operations now in that sense they're currently valued around 10 times that around 700 ish million dollars in terms of the market cap so it's definitely one to ten the usual sp500 average is one to three one to four so i would say the current fundamental sits at half their current level but a lot of people are taking a look at that and saying hold on they're increasing their mining capabilities they're going on for aggressive growth and so they're pricing in all that growth into this future but stock can't go parabolic without fundamentals. Keep that in mind. So unless tomorrow they say, hey, we just went to our Bitcoin mining operations and suddenly found thousands and thousands of miners sitting down, laying down as a donation, then they shouldn't be exploding this way. It costs money to get miners. So you got to think about that with the valuations. 
What do you think about the sticker? Make sure to mention it down in the comments below. Share, subscribe, and like, and have a wonderful day. Now, if you're still here on this video, make sure to drop down below and join our Discord. We have a lot of different things going on, including, for instance, members that give us picks for free. It's not pump and dumps. We just things we think about, swings, etc. We also have really exciting bots. Uh, you can actually use those ones. For instance, we're just testing out this bot, for instance, that gives you Fibonacci resistance points, activities, etc. And we have a bunch of free things, totally free. We run on tips here, and you can ask me questions, suggest stocks, etc. It's a really nice community that has been growing up uh, very fast at a very good rate, and it's totally free. If you would like to join that one, feel free to do so in the description below, and have a wonderful day.